something that we've heard over and over and over for me. You won't hear a new concept, but you might get a new way of looking at it. Because it's so vitally important. And that is to release yesterday. We hear that, but I don't believe we've done it yet. And I, I, some are starting to do it, but I'm not sure you've done it. And I listen to you and I watch you, and I've become aware that it's still holding on. We're still holding on without realizing it. See, it's a subconscious thing that goes on with us. And it, it's just like, I'll be, I'll be straight up front with you about me. Not Vernon, but CL. And that is, I think I've gotten rid of religion. And I think I've got it all out. But every so often, something pops, pops up. up and I think, that's still religion <laughs> inside of me. You know, when I say religion, I'm not talking about a spiritual experience with God. I'm talking about the way we have helped God get so much better. Oh. Yeah. We have pretty well messed Him up in this earth. And we've messed up His message by making yes. it so much better, as we call it. Yeah. Improving. And uh, just a minute, we're on the video now. Let me, let me go for a little bit. All right. Uh, so we, we, we still hold on. And so without realizing it, all of us are still holding on to some or a lot of yesterday. And we think we've let it go, and we want to let it go, but we don't necessarily. I want to read a scripture. Genesis, the 41st chapter. Genesis 4.1. And we'll begin over verse 50. And uh, we'll get you get into some things right now that I think is very, very important. And uh, I'm going to read to you from the... Uh, the paraphrase or from the message right now. So make sure you have this Bible that you can use. Please do. And we welcome all those who are watching the video. Uh, hope that this comes off clear to you. And I know I'm going to read some of you, your book. All right, verse 50, chapter 41 of Genesis. Joseph had two sons born to him before the years of famine came. Now this is reading from the message. Alright? Alright, the son's names were uh, Asnat, daughter of Potipheria, <laughs> the priest of On, was their mother. Now, here's where it gets important, verse 51. Joseph named the firstborn Manasseh. Now the word Manasseh means forget. So that's very important. Joseph named his firstborn son Manasseh, which means forget. And he says, God made me forget all my hardships and my parental home. God made me forget all of my hardships <clears throat> and my parental home. Now in the King James it reads, and still verse 51, and Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for God said he hath made me forget all my toil and all of my father's house. Now you remember what Joseph had to go through. He was betrayed by his brothers. Mm -hmm. They thought they had... I can't see them, honey. I'm going to move over here. Up here. No, don't move I don't want Becky can, getting away from you. You get out of front. Let me move. I'm not going to let Becky get away. She just thinks she's hiding behind you. <laughs> okay, here we go. Joseph was betrayed by his brothers. They wanted to kill him. Now, how'd that make you feel? You knew your only family members wanted to kill you. That is not very encouraging. And then, when they didn't kill him, they said, well, we'll just put him in a hole and leave him there and let him starve to death. The animals will come eat him and we won't have to. Then one of the brothers said, here comes a, a caravan of gypsies headed into the city to sell and buy. 
Let's sell him as a slave. So we're talking about somebody who's had it really tough. This will really make this scripture come alive to you. you nobody in this room can even imagine having a life like this to have to grow up. Your dad really likes you, your brothers hate you, and they're going to get rid of you. So they finally sold him. And he was taken in to the city and sold to one of the wealthy leaders. And he became a servant or a slave in the household. Now, it wasn't his fault that he was a good-looking hunk. <laughs> and the man's wife thought he was cool. And when the man was gone, she started trying to make out with him. Okay, he helped it together. He stayed together. And finally, she demanded and started to try to unrobe him. And she got his jacket and he threw his arms back and let her pull it off and he ran. Okay, a woman who has been hurt or made a fool of many times is not very nice. So when her husband got home, she said, this man you've got here, you've trusted, has tried to rape me. See, I've got his coat. It must have been more than a winter coat. It must have been an outer garment that he wore to cover himself with. And the man became so angry, he had choice of killing him or putting him in the dungeon. He put him in a dungeon. Now, here's a man who has every reason in the world to be bitter, to hate everybody, to hate life, to remember his brothers, to remember their soul him in slavery, to remember the woman, remember the man, remember all of this. And then he has a chance to get out. The baker has a dream. And he tells the baker, say, here's the meaning of your dream. Or here's what you tell Pharaoh is the dream. Alright? They let the baker out of prison. And he goes back to being the baker for the, for the Pharaoh. And he makes a deal with Joseph. I'll tell Pharaoh, you're the one who came up with this. You're the bright one. He'll let you out too. He, he forgets. So here he is. The hope that he had is now gone. And he looks like he's there to die. But he didn't. He stayed faithful. Stayed up. Kept everybody around him encouraged. He never did sing that somebody did me wrong song. You know, anybody here ever, I won't even go ask you to raise your hand. They even acknowledge it, but anybody here ever wonder if you live in one of those somebody done me wrong song lives? Ever come to your mind? Don't, don't, don't even shake your head yes or no, I don't want to know. <laughs> but I want you to know. He had every reason in the world to be bitter. If we had gone through that and we were now in a dungeon, I mean, it wasn't a regular prison. It was dirt with rats and mice and bugs of every kind and had to sleep with those creatures, critters, whatever they were, and damp all the time, no windows to see out. They'd have to open a cage door up above and let a ladder down to come down to, and they'd let you food down, whatever they decide to give you, if it was bread and water and that was it. Pharaoh had a dream. He called all of his men in. All the wise people. Dumb people, idiots, whatever they were. And he said, I want you to tell me the meaning of my dream. And they said, Pharaoh, we can't do that. We don't know. We don't know your dream. Tell us your dream. I forgot my dream. Big deal. So I can't remember my dream, but you know it. You're the wise man. You can tell me. Okay. He said, I'm going to have every one of you put to death if you don't give me that Give me the dream and the meaning. It's over with you guys. And here is the cook, the chef. He said, whoa, 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 wait a minute, king. There's a man you got in jail out there. He told me mine. I bet you he could tell you yours. Get him up here. Clean him up. You notice? Clean him up. He was filthy. I bet you he had body odor that would that would knock every one of us out of this room. <laughs> Living in that damp cage with no showers, no toothbrush. 
for all these months or years, however long it was. And he says, get him up and clean him up and then bring him up here. And he did. This man had it good. He told the dream. He told them about the famine that was coming. He told them all the description. Okay, I just want you to really think about yourself now. Where are you? Why, why am I saying that we probably are still living to some degree in yesterday? We could, and some still are, or you would be freer than what you are today. That's not a put down. All it is is trying to help you think about why certain things happen to you and why some things don't happen and how you can change it. Okay? You know the story, so I don't need to tell you the whole story. Pharaoh made him in charge of preparing for seven years of famine. Now, while he was putting it away, uh, let's see, this was two years before, I believe, the famine started. Uh, it was just before the famine came. He had a wife, and he had the two sons. And he named the first one Manasseh. Forget. Saying, God made me forget all my hardships and my parental home. So he, now let's think about this very wisely. He obviously had not forgotten his hardships. And he had not forgotten what happened. Oh, that's a fast 15 minutes. And what happened at home. Because he's saying, God made me forget those things. If he can remember that God made him forget them, then he remembers it. Alright, so this is not all bad. What he is saying is that all of the sting, because I do not live there anymore, I know it happened. You see, you can't deny the things that have happened. But everything, if you will look at it like this, everything that has ever happened to you has been for your advantage. You say, oh, this couldn't be what I'm going through right now. That rummage sale this week, that... No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that thing that I'm going through right now could not be to my advantage. It is. Everything I've had happen to me has been to my advantage. I could say, poor me, I've been done this or done that. And right now, pastors all over the area, because of a certain one who continually lies about me, they think I'm bad news. Mm -hmm. Why is that good? It's given me a great opportunity to continue to work without attention. Amen. Until suddenly, we had a prophetic word just before all of this started was, and in the right time, when it is necessary, you will be promoted. And when that promotion comes, where I will be, we will be headlines for good stuff and leave all these lies in the, you know, that's the only way to get rid of a lie is to live above it. And am I bothered by that? Not at all. No, I don't even care. To me, it's good because I'm allowed to live undetected almost and be able to do the work God's called me to do. Thank you for watching. I hope this was a help to you today. God bless.